I wish so much that I could be there with you, but my health just makes it impossible. But I am there with you in spirit, and I send each of you my love. I cared for Will with all my heart, and it's with the deepest respect and admiration that I accept this award that bears his name. Everybody has his favorite Will Gear story. Here are a couple of mine. I had known and admired Will's work, and his was the first name that came to mind when we received an order from CBS to film The Homecoming. I was crushed when I learned that Will was in Utah doing a film with Robert Redford. We cast Edgar Bergen in the role, and while Mr. Bergen was a delight, he didn't bring the vitality and exuberance we knew that Will would have brought to the character. The following year, because of the success of The Homecoming, we received an order from CBS to develop a series based on The Homecoming and my earlier novel, Spencer's Mountain. Will was the first actor we cast, and when we brought them all together in a group, we realized that we had assembled a remarkable group, each a superb actor, and each one uniquely suited to his role. At the first read-through of the script, I was concerned. Will was merry and outgoing, while Ellen was dour and downright unfriendly. I took her aside after the reading and said, Ellen, I'd like to see a little more of my real grandmother. She was one of the sweetest. Ellen cut me off and looked at me sternly. Young man, she said, I am going to give grandma an edge. You have got so many sweet people in this show that the audience is going to die of sugar diabetes. I never criticized her again. Far from dying of diabetes, the audience made us number one in the ratings by the end of the year. This was a good answer to the critics who in their reviews ask, who in the world would want to watch a poor family living in the backwoods of Virginia during the Great Depression? Will did a very gracious thing for me during the first hiatus. The folks back in Virginia's Nelson County loved how they had been portrayed in the Waltons, so much so that the annual Nelson County Day celebration was renamed Earl Hamner Day, and they invited me to come and be the guest of honor. It was a festive event, and it was held on the high school football field. At the height of the festivities, a beat-up old bus pulled in and came to a stop in front of the speaker's platform. Will got out, followed by a group of actors. They'd been appearing in a play down in Tennessee, and they'd driven all night to surprise me. A whisper went through the crowd. It's Grandpa Walton. Will made a speech praising me for celebrating my corner of the world and my representation of my boyhood home and family. He claimed it was not so much television as it was in the time-honored tradition of folklore. He scolded the critics for calling it corny, and he said if that was true, he wanted to remind everybody that there was still more corn than concrete in the country. Will came to that part of the country on another occasion, and he stopped to visit my mother. Since it was growing late, my mother asked him if he'd like to spend the night, and he and his driver accepted. The following morning, they drove on to New York, where Will was scheduled to be on the night show. The following morning, my mother called me and said, you tell that old man to never come to my house again. What's the matter, I asked. On the show, Johnny Carson said to Will, what you been up to lately? And he said, I spent last night with Earl Hamner's mother down in Virginia. What's wrong with that, I asked. He didn't spend the night with me, she said. He and the driver slept upstairs in the boys' room. 
How else would you have wanted them said, I asked. I don't know, she admitted. It just sounded suggestive. In that case, I said, think of how many elderly ladies across the country would have been envious of you. She began to laugh. I guess I was just being silly, she said, and asked me to forget she'd made the call. Another Virginia lady, this one a little bit more predatory, came into Will's life. Her name was Edith Pinchbeck, and she was the widow of the dean at the University of Richmond, Dr. Raymond Pinchbeck. Edith was pleased that I had named a character on the show Dr. Beck in honor of her late husband. Edith was a huge Walton fan, and on a trip out west, she asked to visit the set and to watch the filming. She came, and she spent the day on stage 26, and she fell like a ton of bricks for Will Gear. She came back often and asked to visit the set, making sure there was a day when Will was filming. Will was very willing to go on publicity tours, and every time he would come back and say that Edith had shown up for his appearance. Finally, he returned from a, vac vac from a vacation as far away as Hawaii, and he said to me, yep, she was there. I said, Will, I think you've just got to face the fact that she is hot for your body. Will chuckled and he said, won't do her a speck of good. What used to be a stick of joy is just a water spout. I think that Will was never acting on the series. He was just being his talented, endearing self. Here, where he lived and where his being is so present today, I would just like to say thank you, Will, for enriching the lives of each of us who knew and worked with you, and also the lives of the millions in the audience who still love Grandpa Walton. Thank you. This is presented to you, Earl, from my father, who would have done this for you because you got him back on his feet. Consequently, you got our whole family back on our feet. And after that, you are now helping us support the jewel that he gave to the community of Los Angeles. This is the Will Gear Humanitarian Award, and it's dedicated to Earl Hamner for all the beautiful things he has written about human beings, and I think the Waltons is, is the our town of TV. It will last forever. It's in about an era that is very important. This, this is a very moving moment. I, I truly love Will, and uh, I think he returned that love in all of the things that he did. His work is just the daily being of a man who finally got to play himself on yeah, television right, right. because he, he was not playing a character, he was, he was being himself. Mm -hmm. And I think he endeared himself to people all over the world who, mm -hmm. who still love, not the grandpa, but uh, Will the person mm -hmm. because of his portrayal. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm greatly honored mm -hmm. and I thank you. and. Uh, I've received a lot of awards in my career, but uh, I must say that this one moves me to tears. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I really am moved. Oh, good. <laughs> Bless you. My daughter made it. Really? Yeah, it's my daughter really does this. Done. Yeah, she made really. the frame. It's, it's, it's heat. It's <laughs> uh, will, right. will, you, will you show it at the, when the reunion? Yes, but I want you there. Oh.
I, I, maybe in a wheelchair. We'll but we have we have a ramp. We have everything. Really? Here. Oh, yeah. we are so ready. Let's see. Let's see. See how, how you're doing. It'd be let's, wonderful. Let's see how under the uh, the is. California live oaks. You just well, I've learned to eat again, so maybe that's I'll get important. Some, some strength back, <laughs> and uh, we might manage in a wheelchair. Lovely. Lovely. Besides, it's a wonderful way to attract attention. It is. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Richard, and I want to thank you for coming out to support the Theatricum Botanicum. Forty years, hooray, of providing truly original and wonderful and unreproducible theater in Southern California. It's a great place. Glad you came. I just wanted to say that I wish I could be there today to celebrate two of the most important people in my life. To be at, at Will Gears, my beloved grandpa's, you know, great gift of love to the lovers of theater and the people in Southern California, the Theatric and Botanicum. To be there with Ellen and everyone to celebrate the beautiful Earl Hamner. Um, I owe a lot of thanks to a lot of people uh, in this business uh, over a long haul, but there's no one to whom I owe a greater debt of thanks than Earl uh, for a couple of reasons. It obviously gave me the most important leg up um, in my professional career, but you also created one of the most beautiful roles that an actor could ever hope to play. And it's a role John Boyce stays with me all the time. And uh, I don't have enough words of gratitude for you, but I love you and I celebrate with you today. And I'm thinking, as I think all the time, of Will, uh, who was one of the great inspirations to me as a young actor. No matter how crabby or impatient or immature I might have been on the set from day to day, and there were a lot of days like that, Will's gusto for life and for work and for people and for things that were the right thing uh, has stayed with me my whole life. And so thank you, Will. Thank you, Ellen. And thank you, Earl. I love you very much. Congratulations. Mm -hmm.